Right, we're back. So, what we're going to do now is continue through what we were doing last night, which is to take the lid down to the final shape, uh, the final size, to make it run in the same size as the box. Uh, so, we'll scrape a line around the corner, take to the bandsaw, um, and then we need to, once we do that, Use sandpaper with a flat bit of wood to get all this oh. flat bit of wood with, sand, with sandpaper on it just to get all this nice and smooth to take the table saw marks away. Um, once we do that, final shape, that's smooth, then we can start shaping the lid itself um, before we actually take it down to the final shape I need to drill a hole in the centre forcing a bit here um, for our wee handle um, aye. so let's oh, we want to make sure about that one there let's see so pencil We have our line where we need to cut to, which we will do on the bandsaw. So It's rough final shape, which bandsaw like this is, it's all right, you know, it does, but it's no super accurate, and you can't expect it to be super accurate because it's only it's like a hundred pound bandsaw. Um, I like to call it my Christmas cracker bandsaw. They be crappy toys you get out of Christmas crackers that like, you play with it once and it breaks. <laughs> So it cuts and that it does it's it's, it's all right you know it's, it's it's good for small general things like that but for precision work no it's no save your money and buy something decent which i plan to do saving my pennies and i'm going to get a decent one like, um which yeah but that's another topic for another day so i'm just going to go out the sand up and take this down to so it's nice and flat and then we can start shaping the tap after I draw this because I've got the scent on now. So let's just uh, let's just find the, the center of this so I know what to drill. Drill center. So just take it for each corner. And that helps us find the center. Come around, come around to the drill press, and we can. Right.
just going to hand sand, have spurt with an ace, a bit of wood that I know is nice and flat. Which, oh, this bit's nice and flat, so just going to use some 240. 240 grit and we'll spend a wee minute sanding that down. I've took, I've took majority of the lines out for the table saw. Still some there, but you can't feel it. And that's acceptable. That's fine to me. Again, she went completely gone. Well, I might do a bit more work at it, but for video's sake, we'll move on. Keep sanding that. If you want it to be completely fine. But let's uh, let's test the fit. That's nice. You fit any way. So ways. shape I'm gonna do. Um, we're gonna take it down, down to, oh, gonna take it down to about here, maybe a bit more, a bit there. Bevel a bit there. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. The guide. I'll put a wee bevel on it like that. Each corner. I'm hopeful we'll be left with a flat bit there. That's that's what I'm going to aim for. Whether we get that exact bevel is another story. <laughs> but let's try. Freehand, you know. 
Dat zal we niet. En how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a block plane. Any plane would do, but I know my block plane is really sharp. And to start with when I'm doing it, I'm going to start on this side and go away the grain. Same with this one, go away the grain. Because if I start on this side, then I'll get massive chip out, tear out, and it might get tear out beyond the point I want it to go. So once we've took it down to a rough size and a rough shape, then we'll go back to the sander and we'll smooth in all the hard edges out and we'll get it nice and round and beveled the way we want it. So let's get back in this one now. In the vase, in that bit, just get up just a wee bit, if we can do it just up just a wee bit more. Do it. And we'll use our block plane. Not the best block plane, but it's a low angled block plane with the bevel done so it can can cut really nicely. Look.
shape of the wood. So we have the final shape of the lid. So all that has to be done now is uh, a bit of hand sanding. It's got to be a wee bevel on each end. Let's see how it fits up. That fits up nicely with the lid. Nicely, nicely. But before we can do final assembly, we must sand. And before we make more mess, we must clean up the mess we've made. the shavings up here. Now do the I'll take my bag of sound paper. Start with 400. So, I'm going to sand it. Continue to sand it. Both of them. 400, 800, then I've got to 2000. Um, 2000 should do it. Maybe 3000 after that. When I've done that, we'll come back. So I went through 400, 800, 2000, 3000 and then I'm going to finish it off with 5000, super fine. like smooth like glass you see the shimmer there it's so nice to nice to feel nice to touch but before Before we call it done, but you know, we need to put the lid on, put the wee hangwheel on, and put Thank <laughs> you. 
You got to come up. Yeah. And then we can. I like to. Um, just a wee bit of super glue on this. So it doesn't come back off. No need to take it off, it's not going to come back off, so just a wee dab and that'll get between the threads. Like right. those. And then I will a wee bit which I will put in they are we will we'll put that in there we'll use a bit of wood glue just a wee hmm, might actually it might actually be a tad too big for that but we'll see and if it is, we can just sand it down with it all. Chisel it. Get chiseled. We'll get a wax stick. Oh! <laughs> Made that last year. Just broke me now. <laughs> Funny. Couple of wee gentle wax. That's it. Um, it's protruding a wee bit of sharp counter sink the inside for the screw, but it's in there. And we can, two things we can use our uh, sharp. Chisel or oh, we can do we can do the same thing I barely notice it for a distance. So hmm. blemish in the wood. But I notice it for a distance. Blemish in the wood. Nice. Now we will oil it, but we will oil it, polish it, and after that we will put a bit of leather inside here. So that's all the next. Let's get my gloves on. I'm better just getting new ones, but I don't like to waste. No, I don't. I don't like to waste stuff. Now I'm using mm, boiled linseed oil, and then after I use that, I've got a mix 
it's, it's not it's in this, but in this I've got a mix of uh, beeswax, um, turpentine, and a small bit of linseed oil. And I use that after I put linseed oil on it, just as a sort of polish. Which is maybe unnecessary, but I do it, I like to do it, so. I think it's valuable to preserve the wood. Let me glue that. Hmm. So, yes. So I don't like to put linseed oil on cloths and rags because it's just, it's a waste. You, you don't need to do that. Look, get some gloves. Either put a wee bit on that, rub it with your gloves, or what I do is I just snob it in my hand and I use that. Get a bit of the back here. And I think you save a lot. Uh, save a lot of that oil by doing that and linseed oil it's uh, it's no it's not that cheap you know so you don't want to just be waste it but use it sparingly so we've got enough of this now and we want to get maybe three or four coats uh, depending you know how how, how much oil you want in it and how shiny you want to get it but that's why I polish it with the higher grit sandpaper because um, that puts a sheen in it so you don't actually need to put that many coats on look at that it's a lovely piece of wood I always look forward to this part putting that oil on it and just seeing the the, the wash, I don't know if that's any word. <laughs> Seeing the grain coming out, the grain structure, the fibres, all coming out. So I, I'll put two or three coats on. I'll give between 15 minutes between each coat, get a wee rub down, put an RV1 on, do that in an hour, and that's perfectly fine. Now, you could. a couple of times in like the one day and then like tomorrow come back and do it and do that and you'll get a good result for that as well but uh, boiled linseed oil is I think it's something that you know joiners have used for hundreds of years to preserve their wood and it, it gives that shine, that sheen to it as well. So I'm just putting a bit in here to get right into the corners. And that's the thing with, with linseed oil, it soaks right in to like, the fibres of the wood. And it'll stay, it'll stay in there for years, years. So I'm just going to land a wee bit on that, just right or in it. And we'll leave that there for 10 minutes and I'll come back and by the time I come back and I've got this so is a wee layer of it by the time I come back all that oil would, would have soaked into the wood so come back get a wee buff a wee wipe another wee coat have a wee look back down look down see how it is and make a decision how many coats we're going to put on. Yeah, that'll do. <coughs> so that's been uh, two two coats in a spacey an hour, and I think I think when it comes to linseed oil, ball linseed oil, it, the more coats you leave on it in a longer period of time, the, the greater the, the luster will be. But I think two coats 
it is basically a noodle too, it's perfectly fine. If you want, you can get another wee coat the next game day. Get a sweet wipe, and then I'll bring it up to the camera and you can see, just get it clean, and I'll be clean back off. See it's, it's all soaked in here. That that uh, that would even more. So, there's loads of ways to to polish wood. Loads of ways, but I like oil. You've got a uh, another one I use is a uh, shellac. Shellac's a good good polish. It's a good thing to put on the wood to polish it and protect it. Let's put it on. There we go. Nice. See, the, my original intention was to use uh, the same wood, but if I remember to start a video, I, uh, I overcut it and I left myself short, so I didn't have enough for this. But I think it's nice. I think it's a nice contrast. Look. So now what we're going to do, which is the final stage before I call it finished, is a wee bit of polish. It's a wee bit of polish. Let's just get to zoom in a bit. Get a wee bit of just work and just stir this. And I say this is beeswax. It's beeswax, a uh, wee bit of turpentine, and a wee bit of bod linseed argue, but the majority of it is uh, beeswax. And I'll just dip my finger in just. Smear it all there. Ah, the smell. This on, and then you can, you can just you can just wipe it off with just a rag cloth. But.
I've got these wee out and loop polish velcro um right your drill whatever I put that in my drill and I'll do that. But you can also just use the material to wipe it and polish it again look easy enough. Just use one of all drills. That's a hundred time machine here. And then just with the linseed oil. Nice. So the wee tapered end, it comes up, uh, it comes up, and it comes back down again just, just ever so slightly. Just takes that squareness, boxiness away from it. Look. Nice. There's that wee bit, the dill that was in the other one. Which again, that's fine. And you still got the glue there on that bit, but I never was really bothered with this because I knew that I was going to put a bit of material in there, which that is what we'll do the new to finish up the video. Kind. Put it at your door, for your keys, whatever you can think of. 
nice wee unique box. Somebody walks in, sees it, starting, point of conversation, would not. Aye. But, nice. I enjoy building, creating, I enjoy woodworking all together and it's, 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 a, it's a progress, it's a journey, it's about learning um, Woodworking for me has been, it's been a progress it's a journey of learning. Um, I never went to school. I never had any formal training. I, I had nobody to show me what's what and to do this and to do that. Like, I simply picked up some wood, picked up some tools, had a plan in my mind that I wanted to learn, got to build and create things. I, I guess I've always been like that, you know, that creative type. Um, and that was it, you know? Plowed ahead. Of course, YouTube is a very important tool for when it comes to learning. There's, there's maybe two or three woodworkers that I watch on YouTube that I myself have took in, inspiration for. Um, so, very important to find that thing you love and enjoy and plow at it, keep at it, because you just never know your own abilities and your own capabilities until you try that new thing and then you'll see so for me that's what it's all about you know so life's about be happy have joy do the thing you love even in the midst of a storm unhappiness put a smell on your face go on about it you know what I mean like, because life is hard so I want to thank everybody for for watching me I don't know how long this video will be because I probably took, uh, there's probably a lot of footage, um, so I'll try and condense it into as much as I can. So, thank you all for watching, and I hope you come back, because I'll certainly make more videos in the future, whether they be about woodworking, metalworking, just tinkering, uh, got a lot of ideas to build machines, certain t things like that, just... All sorts and all, all, all sorts of different things. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So thank Last you again. See it before I end the video. I just hope that through watching my video, uh, that you have been inspired in some way, some form. That it's been educational, entertainment for you in some way. That you took something for it. For in a way, that's why we're all here. You know. We're all here to help each other, some way or some form, to give, you know, give to that person who's no go. So, for me, but a big party why I, I built this workshop, uh, today what a day, is, is doing to that, you know what I mean? Like, um, so, I hope that you have took something for it and that I've inspired these to maybe pick up some tools and to to you know try and build something the smallest thing the biggest thing like that but you don't need uh, you know a workshop fault with tools to, to build something you know just some chisels saw mountain gauges pencils you know and just working something out anything doesn't matter what it is start off with small things and you you build up to bigger things like that you know that was that's the case for me in my workshop you know just start off with a couple of chisels couple of saws, couple of measuring devices, things like that, and build stuff, and before you know it, you'll have a workshop like this, you know, it took me, it's taken me two years to, to build up what I've got like that, um, and it's, it's, it's worth it, it's always worth it, you know, to pursue that thing that you love, you know, and no to a stumbling block in front of yourself because you don't believe you can do it. If you've got a, a feeling or a passion that you want to do something but you don't want to pursue it through other reasons, that day reasons probably come for other people and know yourself. You know? 
Go with your thoughts, not other people's. So again, thank you for watching, and I hope you, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you come back. <laughs> right? God bless. I'll see you later. And uh, as my channel grows, well, as my channel grows, if my channel grows, God willing, then, well, the things that I build, you know, like, like, you know, like the box, like that, um, I want to, I want to give them away, you know, because I can't, I can't keep building things and just and piling up, <laughs> you know, so, I'm going to, I'll find some way to, you know, randomly choose someday to to give the box to to give the things that I build to you know so um that, that that's a nice thing today that's a good thing today it's a personal thing like that when you're watching me build it and then randomly you're chosen and I will gift you this box I will give you this box and I'll, I'll give you whatever it is I've built you know usually but uh, boxes I probably build all sorts of different boxes like that but Aye, but it's a nice thing to to give, you know. I believe that it's, it's better to give than to receive. So I'll find some sort of way when there's enough people uh, on the channel watching like that that I can find some sort of way to randomly pick somebody to to give the things away that they're watching me build. So there we go.